Brazil had a tumultuous presidential election, but candidates had one thing in common, fear and loathing of the Chinese Communist Party. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This month, Brazil held its presidential election. The choice was between incumbent Jair Bolsonaro, who fashioned himself as the anti-socialist candidate, but has been accused by many of being a far-right leader with authoritarian tendencies. His opponent, Lula da Silva, also accused him of pedophilia and cannibalism. Lula, who had been president from 2003 through 2010, is openly socialist. He's also a convicted felon who used bribe money to buy luxury property. The election was close. Lula narrowly edged out Bolsonaro winning with 50.9% of the vote against Bolsonaro's 49.1%. That's a difference of only about 2 million in a country of over 200 million people. However, as of this recording, Bolsonaro has yet to concede defeat. And tens of thousands of his supporters have protested what they claim was election fraud. To which I can only say, first time. Seriously, this is how every election is going to go down from now on. We may as well go back to the divine right of kings. Which reminds me, vote for Chris Chappell for Supreme Leader of these United States for life. It's the last vote you'll ever need. Elections in Brazil are usually dominated by domestic issues. In fact, in his campaign promises for a second term, Bolsonaro didn't even devote a single paragraph to foreign relations. That being said, this election was particularly China-heavy. According to a Brazilian journalist, it is now clear that China has entered the domestic political debate, with uncertain consequences and repercussions for China's relations not only with the largest South American country, but with all of Latin America. This is important because Brazil is South America's largest and richest country. How Brazil looks at and treats the Chinese Communist Party has a ripple effect throughout the continent. Brazil is very influential. Here's what South America would look like if Brazilian wax were never invented. But the Brazilian economy is suffering from a severe cycle of deindustrialization, and China is getting a lot of the blame for sending in cheap goods that have replaced domestic production. Local business people complain about the few tariffs and regulatory barriers for Chinese products, especially with the emergence of e-commerce platforms like AliExpress in the country. Amazon actually isn't as popular in Brazil, which has to hurt since Brazil is literally home to the Amazon. In 2021, Brazil was the main destination for Chinese investment in the world. And if you've been watching the show, you know Chinese investment tends not to benefit the locals in the end. Chinese investment is like the dollar menu at Taco Bell. You're all excited at first, but you always wind up regretting it. So how did the candidates talk about China? And how did their actions match up with their rhetoric? I'll tell you more after this quick commercial break, unless we're demonetized again. Welcome back. China played an unusually large role in this year's Brazilian presidential election, because China has been playing a big role in Brazil for decades. Take the number three candidate, Ciro Gomes. Even though he's a prominent figure on the Brazilian left, he was one of the first to attack Chinese influence. At a campaign event, he said he thinks China is using Venezuela as a military proxy to keep Brazil in line. That's a pretty bold claim. But Gomes was only the number three candidate. The election was really between Lula and Bolsonaro. And they also had some pretty strong things to say about China. Let's start with Lula. Now, when Lula was president before, he actually brought Brazil and China closer together. He was in charge when China surpassed the U.S. as Brazil's largest trading partner in 2009. He also pushed to develop BRICS, a sort of economic alliance between Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. That was his first mistake. I mean, why call it BRICS when Cribs is right there? That would have been so much cooler. Nevertheless, on the campaign trail this time, Lula took aim not just at the Chinese Communist Party, but the Brazilian business community that supported the infiltration. At a speech at the Sao Paulo State Federation of Industry, he said, We have the illusion that China is occupying Africa, that China is occupying Latin America. No, it is occupying Brazil. 
It is dominating Brazil. He also took time to praise his former vice president, describing him as the only businessman who said, I'm not afraid of China. Lula basically blamed Beijing for the deindustrialization happening in Brazil, and certainly not anything to do with his own socialist policies. He blamed another country for his own policy shortcomings? It's heartwarming that presidents are the same no matter where you go. But Lula definitely has put out mixed messages on China. He told farmers that if elected, he would restore relations with China in six months, since China imports a lot of Brazilian produce, grains, and meat. Because while Lula is talking tough on China now, Bolsonaro did that during his previous presidential campaign. Bolsonaro was the first Brazilian president to be elected with a tough discourse on China, often criticizing Chinese investments in Brazil as a threat to national security and economic sovereignty. When Bolsonaro first campaigned in 2018, he said he would curb Chinese spending, especially of critical Brazilian industries. For instance, China controls most of Brazil's ports. So Chinese investments are more like if the Taco Bell dollar menu held the title to your car. Bolsonaro said China isn't buying in Brazil, it's buying Brazil. Taking that line was possible because of how close Lula brought Brazil and China. Bolsonaro was also the first Brazilian presidential candidate to visit Taiwan. He also tweeted that he would break with previous Brazilian left-wing governments that had been friendly with communist regimes. During his time as president, Bolsonaro, his allies, and even one of his sons frequently mentioned Beijing and even got into a fight with the then-Chinese ambassador, Yang Wanming, after they accused China of covering up COVID-19 origins. And Bolsonaro's supporters echoed that tough-on-China rhetoric during the recent election. In Brazilian WhatsApp groups, an amateur montage of photos of Lula with Xi Jinping accompanied the message, the elections this year will determine whom you serve. Bolsonaro is the only one capable of saving us from the Chinese communist domination, agreed with Lula and the corrupt Workers Party. Man, you know the CCP is bad when voters think, yeah, Bolsonaro might be a pedophile cannibal, but at least he's against the CCP. However, for a guy who once vowed to, quote, put a foot in the ass of socialism, in many ways, Brazil and China got even closer during his term. Under Bolsonaro, trade with China increased from about $100 billion in 2019 to $135 billion in 2021. And remember, that was during the pandemic. Also remember, this is in a country that uses this Amazon more than this one. Meanwhile, Chinese investments in Brazil tripled. Bolsonaro also allowed Chinese telecom Huawei to set up its 5G networks. You know, the telecom tied to China's military, that many countries around the world have banned for being a threat to national security? Speaking of, according to Brazil's ambassador to China, there was great interest in joining the Belt and Road, which has gotten so many countries trapped in deep debt to the Chinese Communist Party. That would be a strange move from someone who warned about China buying Brazil. Bolsonaro visited China in 2019. After talks with Xi Jinping, he signed eight trade agreements, and even gifted Xi Jinping a soccer jersey. Though to be fair, I think that was just kind of something Bolsonaro did. During his trip, he also said, Brazil needs China and China needs Brazil. And that their countries are completely aligned in a way that reaches beyond our commercial and business relationship. Then came COVID. At first, Bolsonaro canceled an order for the Chinese vaccine. The vaccine that Chinese officials admitted wasn't very effective. Bolsonaro said he would not let Brazilians be guinea pigs for the Sinovac drug. But let's just say that opposition did not last long. And even though at the beginning of the pandemic, Bolsonaro was taking a cue from Trump, calling it the China virus, when Bolsonaro went on Tucker Carlson a few months ago, he had this to say about the origin of the virus. Where do you think the COVID virus came from? Well, allegedly from a laboratory on the other side of the world. But no deep investigation or no in-depth investigation has been conducted. You know, just some laboratory on the other side of the world. Maybe it came from a lab in Papua New Guinea. That's what he meant when he said he didn't want Brazilians being guinea pigs. Bolsonaro also played up the idea that Brazil is a Christian country. And he was one of the few world leaders to use the UN General Assembly to demand action against the rise of persecution against Christians around the world. But he never mentioned China's role in it. 
despite the terrible persecution Christians face in China. Under his watch, Brazil also abstained, along with Ukraine, from a UN vote condemning the genocide of Uyghurs in China. So basically, Brazil has a bunch of politicians who talk tough on China on the campaign trail, but go soft as soon as they're in office. Wow, Brazilian elections really are like the US. And China Uncensored would not be possible without support from viewers like you, either by liking and subscribing, sharing the show with friends and family, buying an awesome t-shirt from our merch store at chinauncensored.tv slash merchandise, or through direct support on the crowdfunding website Patreon or our exclusive social media community on Locals. Those are the fans I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, who join us in the fight against the Chinese Communist Party. As a thank you to them, I respond to their questions. Today's question comes from Joe Achi on Locals. Russia is often referred to as the Sleeping Bear. As a reference to that nickname, could you refer to China as the Creeping Panda? since they slowly creep forward with their salami slicing. Also, CCP is creepy, and so are pandas. I think that would be a very funny and true nickname. You know, that's a great idea. On the surface, pandas look innocent and cuddly, but behind the facade is bloodthirsty fangs that would tear your throat out if they ever got the chance, just like the CCP. Creeping panda is also a good idea because everyone hates pandas, so those feelings would be transferred to the CCP. And the best part is, like pandas, someday the CCP will be extinct. Thanks for the suggestion, Johachi. And thank you for watching. If you'd like to join us in the fight against the creeping panda I call the CCP, join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army over on our censorship-free social media platform on Locals. That's chinauncensored.locals.com. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. Thank you.